Hi, and welcome to MI Tamiya Guy. Today we're building the Tamiya TTO2 chassis. One thing to remember when you're building one of these is to always look at your body to make sure that you're building the correct size because there's different wheelbases of this chassis. So you can see right here, we're building a 251 millimeter body, which is this really cool Zach Speed Ford Capri. And it'll show you some different things that you need to check out in the manual. For the different wheelbases. So we're going to build the short configuration. We'll be using a bunch of hop-ups today. So right off the bat we'll be using this TTO2 aluminum propeller shaft. It replaces this part. Uh, this part's not bad but it just will be a little more rigid uh, and perform a little better. And with that we've got the aluminum propeller joints, and the high-speed gear set. The other thing that we'll be putting in is a full ball bearing kit. And I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you use ball bearings in some of these TTO2 kits. They really uh, enhance the performance and runtime of the car. And it's one of, it's probably the top upgrade that I would do for each one of those cars. So I'll get going and I'll be back in just one second. Just wanted to say, if you can please subscribe, it would we'd greatly appreciate it to help our little channel get growing. Thanks. So here's the high-speed gear set, fully assembled. Now we'll move on to step number four and step number five, putting the propeller shaft into the chassis. Here you go with all the drive train installed, and you can see that the ball bearings fall into those little cutouts. Got the nice bling to me a drive shaft, and again, the ball bearings falling into those cutouts. We're moving on next to building the two gearboxes. This is always one of my favorite parts of the build. I enjoy putting these together. And one thing that's important is just it shows removing some of the flashing. So as you pull some of these parts off of the trees, the plastic trees, if there's little pieces left over, just take a hobby knife, kind of just what they're showing, and just trim those little extra pieces off. That way the gearbox will be extremely smooth. The other thing I like to do is add just a little bit extra grease to the front gearbox so that it functions like a diff, but also just slightly like a spool as well. I like the way that that handle's coming out of corners and just the way it drives better. So I'll be right back once those are built. So there are two completed diffs. Uh, these little screws here on top are kind of a pain to put in, so I end up just using a little bit of extra grease and just kind of touch the tip of it, and that helps thread it in and make it a little a bit easier uh, to screw those in. But now we'll move on to putting those into this chassis. So here's a big piece of that flashing I was talking about that's left over, so I'm just gonna trim those few pieces off with an X-Acto knife to make sure that they're nice and smooth. So now I've just completed step eight, attaching the front arms and the gear cover. So it looks kind of like this. The main thing you want to notice with these is just that these arms are kind of falling freely and that you've got this area nice and lubed up. Now we'll move to the rear of the car. Here's the rear gear diff uh, being attached to the chassis and the drive line. At this point, everything should kind of smoothly spin. So now we're at step number 10. This is attaching the rear uh, upper arms. And you'll notice that up here, it says to go to page 18 for the short version. So I'll be flipping to 18. And it just shows that we're gonna flip the arms around from one direction to another to slightly alter the wheelbase. Now we're on step 11, attaching the aluminum motor mount and motor plate to the torque tune motor.
This is step 12, just getting your pinion gear mesh set up. I just kind of put that in there around that 10 millimeter mark like they suggest, and then just touch it up myself once it's uh, on the spur gear. Now we've got the motor mount cover in place, as well as some of the body mounts. Actually, these are the mounts for the battery stay. Back to page 18 to do the rear lower arms. Front and rear arms and front and rear bumper supports are now attached. Now we'll be installing the front upright system. Step number 18. Now we're on step 20, uh, attaching the rear uprights. And I'm gonna use the TTO2 aluminum rear uprights at the three degree offset. So we're at step 21, the dampers. I'm actually gonna cheat on this step and use a pair of TRF dampers I have left over from another project. We're on to step number 24, the steering. We're going to use the aluminum steering bridge and aluminum racing steering set for some added bling and a little more uh, technical steering. Here's the steering fully completed. Works nice and smooth on those ball bearings and should take a lot of the slop out of the steering on the TTO2. I'll also be using the TTO2 high torque servo saver. So I've built that up and we'll be placing that on very soon. Now we're moving on to electronics. So we have this ProTech servo, um, which I've been really happy with these. So it's the PTK 100 SS. I'm going to use the TVL E02 that came with the kit and a Futaba basic uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio along with the torque tune motor that also came in the kit. Starting to test all the electronics. Now we've got all the electronics installed. So you'll see we've got the receiver on top of the servo. We've got the ESC and the motor and just an old battery that I had laying around. So it's really coming together now. It's almost done. This kit comes with two-piece wheels and also tire foams that you're going to put right into the tire themselves.
So I didn't like the way that the steering angle was looking, so I added in this small spacer to make that a nice straight angle from the servo arm over to the top of the aluminum steering set. And here's the car fully completed with the bumper and the body posts on and the battery uh, hole. So now it's time to work on the body and get this car finished. So I've painted the Capri, and now I'm just taking off the overspray film that's on the outside of the body. So you paint them on the inside, and then there's this little film you pull off. And you can see here the difference once you take that off, so it really brings out the shine. Until you do that, it's kind of a dull, uh, almost scratched look. But then once you take that protective film off, the car really comes to life.